Hi guys, this video concludes the early Renaissance courts and focuses specifically on Isabella d'Este or Isabella d'Este Gonzaga if you include her married name. Um, her dates are on the screen and I include two portraits. One is the Leonardo portrait that we saw in the previous lecture, so by Leonardo da Vinci. Um, it's on the right side here. It is cropped, so we'll talk about that in a second. And then also the image by Titian that was created in the 1530s, so well into Isabella's life. She was towards the end of her life at that point. However, Titian, as a portrait artist who often created very flattering images, uh, represented her in her youth, and many people thought that this really looked nothing like her. Um, however, Isabella was always on the hunt for a good portrait, so I'm sure it pleased her immensely. So Isabella, as the most famous female collector of the Renaissance, was a patron of uh, artists, like the painters we see here, but also sculptors, uh, lots of different fields, art objects. She had uh, rooms where she held her collections, where we'll, which we'll see in a minute. Uh, and then she also was a patron of music and of literature, poetry, and she was always interested in learning, and uh, she was very interested in mythological subject matter, matter and the collection of antiquities which was somewhat unusual for women of you know at this period during this period um, most women limited themselves primarily to religious imagery so it's interesting that Isabella was interest had this wide array of image of interests so focusing in on the Leonardo cartoon which we've already seen um, but I'm going to go into it in a bit more detail this work is a nice precursor to the Mona Lisa, so we can see a bit more of the female frame here. We're getting more of that three-quarter view, however her face still is in profile, whereas the Mona Lisa will be facing forward. We can see Isabella's hands, which will also be an important part of the Mona Lisa. However, in this case, it because it has been cropped, we are missing a portion at the bottom. This image has been pricked for transfer, so the plan was that it would be a completed portrait at the end, um, that this was just a preparatory work, a cartoon. Uh, he clearly is showing off Isabella's interest in fashion. She was well known for setting trends in the Italian courts. So we can see her gown here on full display, at least the upper part. Uh, there were some rumors that there was a rediscovered, that this finished painting has been rediscovered recently, although most scholars don't necessarily agree with that. So if you Google this image in the news, you may see a painting. Uh, however, this painting was probably created uh, later and based on this particular cartoon. So the original cartoon would have had a lower portion that has been cropped off, and it would have had Isabella pointing to a book. So it's nice to see this version that is after Leonardo, where we actually can see Isabella pointing to a book. Um, and this is a nice indication of how she not only wanted to be seen as beautiful and fashionable, but also learned. So this idea that she wanted to show herself as literate. And although she did complain that she didn't necessarily understand Latin all that well, um, she clearly was interested in literature and wanted to show it off in her artworks. Isabella, like many of the men in the courts of the Renaissance, commissioned Renaissance medals to be distributed. Uh, they were created in bronze, however she had one created in gold and it also was adorned with gems, so this was hers. And we see this very fancy medal that survives to us today and we're very lucky to still have it. So Isabella was born to the Duke of Ferrara, a city very close to Mantua, and then she married the Marchese of Mantua um, and became the Marchesa of Mantua. So she went from one relatively small but important court in in the Italian on the Italian peninsula over to this other court also in both cases art and culture were very very important. So it's no surprise that this interest stayed with her. Uh, Isabella had spaces for her collections, both paintings and sculptures and art objects. So she had her studiolo, which was adorned with paintings, including paintings by Andrea Mantegna. She also had an area that was called the, Gro the Grotto that included, um, included art objects. And so here we see an example of the Andrea Mantegna, Mars, and Venus. Uh, she collected antiquities. This is just to give you a sense of the type of antiquity she collected. This is not an exact antiquity in her collection. Um, so here I'm just giving you an image that shows a combination of the types of objects in her collection. So the gold medal was actually in her collection. Um, she did collect bronze sculptures by Antico, who was a sculptor that created bronze, very or relatively small bronze sculptures based on ancient 
ancient examples. Um, she also collected Maiolica, tin glazed earthenware with mythological subjects, probably commissioned by her daughter, the Duchess of Urbino, and this was created by an artist from Urbino. Um, she also collected cameos, not this exact cameo, but probably something similar. So let's focus in on these Maiolica dishes because they do give us a nice sense of her interest in mythology and ancient culture and literature. Um, so these dishes commissioned by her daughter, most likely, as I said, in Urbino, have um, different stories from, for example, the text of Ovid and also Virgil. But let's look at two examples from Ovid. Um, and you can see they're almost directly taken from printed texts that were probably in circulation among artists, including Maiolica artists, these ceramic paintings that we see um, that created these very beautiful, almost painting-like dishes. So here we have the story of Apollo, Python, and Daphne. So Apollo is represented three times, once with Cupid, because he's going to fall in love with Daphne, once with Python, who he's defeating, and once chasing Daphne, who he's in love with, and Daphne is crying out to her father to save her um, from Apollo's advances. So she's turning into a laurel tree, which will become Apollo's favorite tree. This dish also features the coat of arms of Isabella d'Este, marking it as her own, and also some of Isabella d'Este's um, emblems, her markers, how she would kind of mark her different possessions, her spaces within the palace. So um, we'll go through those in just a second. So here they are. Um, these are just six of them. We have the 27, which was a sign of her probably, um, probably meaning to imply that she could overcome adversity. Musical rest and repeats may relate to the virtues of silence. Violence. The Alpha and Omega could have religious connotations or just ideas of a beginning and, and an end or a comprehensive universal quality. Um, lottery tickets have to do with the unpredictability of fortune. Her motto has to do with not having or living with extremes, so neither by hope nor by fear, and then her initials for Isabella um, were also often included in her spaces and also on her Maiolica. So here we can see one other dish, the expulsion of Mira and the birth of Adonis. So this particular story um, is about a daughter who falls in love with her father, creates a plot for them to have an intimate relationship. When he discovers that it is his daughter, he casts her out of the house, which you can see over here. And then you can see that she is pregnant, she's turned into a myrrh tree, so the stories of Ovid have to do with metamorphosis or change, so here she is changing, she's changed into the tree, but we can still see her head, and because she's pregnant, out comes the baby, the baby is Adonis, who Venus will fall in love with, so we see that story in the back, and again, Isabella's emblems are included on the dish, so anyone who looked at them would clearly see that these were Isabella's. And here we can see that connection, again, between text and image uh, across these two examples. And there's a recent film that has come out with um, an artist named Esther Mantovani, who's from Mantua, who recreated these dishes so that we could see all of them together. Because today, these dishes are in many different collections, so it's hard to get that sense of an ensemble in a banquet setting. So here we have um, a just a still from the short film Illustrated Credenza, and we can see that this is included.